Eddie Andrews, do you think the book has any merit? Are there parts of it that you found yourself agreeing with? Maybe there are interpretations or, you know, opinions that you thought, well, actually, you know, he's right here. This is this is exactly what I have seen. I agree with him. Um, I would say that it's right to talk about big issues like race and, you know, the British monarchy and colonialism. He goes into a lot of detail about kind of the British Empire. These things are all fair to talk about. And in fact, I've had conversations with him about it, you know, personally and privately. But what I would say is that by bringing names at hominem attacks into the public domain is not the way to do it. Do I think that there is client journalism? Do I think that there is sometimes an unhealthy relationship between journalists and the royals? Well, not the royals, it's the courtiers. And look, you know, we're all doing our job. The courtiers are paid to defend the principles and we are paid to try and get stories. Certainly I was when I was on the biggest tabloid newspapers in the country. In fact, I met up with Harry's press sec, old press sec last week and said, Emily, I need to ask you, did you really hate Prince Harry? I said, no, of course I didn't. I really liked him personally, but my job was to write about him and write the stories that you didn't want me to print. <laughs> and of course, Omid says that, you know, we were all in bed with the royals and we didn't write anything that was, you know, remotely negative. That's just not true. And, and that's Sarah, obviously, same same job, maybe a different perspective, maybe the same. When you read what Omid has to say about how it works, you know, how royal stories arrive in the press, who does what deal with who, how this all happens. Is that what you see your career as? Is that what you've been doing all these years? Omid actually makes a distinction in the book between newspaper print journalism yes. and broadcast journalism and having always been on the broadcast journalist side you are that bit further removed you're not necessarily doing uh, the deals and the trades it's not about getting a line from a source you know you need to have the pictures you need mm. to have uh, the words so I see it uh, from I come at this from a different uh, perspective uh, and perhaps I didn't see things in the same way as I would have done if I had been uh, covering the royals from a newspaper perspective there are uh, as Emily raised some valid questions uh, raised in his book Book, there are certainly valid questions to be asked in the monarchy about how it maintains its relevance, how it reaches out to a younger audience, and those relationships between the monarchy and the press, which Prince Harry has been laying bare in court cases, for example. There are some valid arguments. It is an interesting uh, book, but none of what he has really written in this book is new, apart from what we have now seen in the Netherlands and this claim and these names being put out there, whether or not they are true. All right, so, so Emily, the names are out there, whether or not they're true. Piers Morgan revealed them in this country, but actually anybody who wanted to go online could have found them out for themselves. That's why he revealed them. He said they're in the, uh, you know, the, they're in the ether. Anybody who wants to have a look can look, so I might as well say what they are because everybody knows what they are if they're interested. And he also said, we don't know if it's true. In fact, he said he didn't believe anyone had said anything racist anyway, and there was no proof that they had, et cetera, et cetera. But now those names, are out there, Emily, will there be some kind of repercussions or will this be another instance of never complain, never explain and everybody in the royal family just carries on doing their jobs and ignores this completely? Well, I think any allegations of racism against anyone are very damaging. And we saw when William and Kate went to the Caribbean last spring and Edward and Sophie also went to the Caribbean after them to on as part of the Platinum Jubilee celebrations, you know, Caribbean countries that are a part of the realms, you know, the, the current king, King Charles, is, is king of 14 countries, some of which are in the Caribbean. You know, many people in the Caribbean cited Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah Winfrey as a, as a, as a you know, example of racism within the royal family. So it is damaging. It's damaging to those who've been named, it's damaging to, I would suggest, Omid, but I think it's also very damaging to Harry and Meghan because, you know, these are private conversations. These are supposed to be private letters being played out. And as, you know, we've already said, we don't know the context. We don't know exactly what has happened. I doubt that we will get any kind of clarification or statement from Buckingham Palace. They have suggested that all avenues are open to them, including legal action. But I think you're right, Vanessa. I think it will just be a case of keep calm, carry on, don't say anything, uh, recollections may vary, but I do think that this, it will leave an indelible mark because there will always be these questions, well, what exactly did X say? And what, was, what, what did Y say? And is there really racism at the heart of the royal family? 
And, and Sarah, you know, this, this will leave some kind of question mark, some kind of legacy. And you could see how it could seriously damage any overtures between Harry and, and Meghan towards uh, the, the Charles and Camilla or, you know, anyone else in the family because you feel as if, I'm assuming, you can't trust them because you're not quite sure what they're going to leak and what they're going to say. Yes, and look, only last week we were sitting here, weren't we, talking about uh, potential thawing of relations between the King and his son with this birthday phone call uh, from Montecito uh, to King Charles and a video message from Princess uh, Lilibet and Prince Archie. And that seemed to be a first step. Another call was scheduled, for example. We discuss whether or not this was going to be the first step along a path of reconciliation. Now this book has come out, now whether or not Harry and Meghan have anything to say about it, whether or not they publicly distance themselves, but this book has reignited this royal racism row and all of those issues around trust between the UK, royals and Montecito.